Welcome back everybody and another great day because you know today is the day that you're going to learn how to play My Best Friend's Girl by The Cars just like you know it on the record. Hey, if you haven't done so already, please jump down, click subscribe, ring the bell, let you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have jump links in it so you can go right to the part of the lesson that you want to see if you want to bypass some of my yapping. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. Thank you. There's a lot of different ways. There's super thanks, which is like throwing a tip in the tip jar. You can join my Patreon page and there's exclusive content on there, including chord charts and tabs for all the stuff I do here on YouTube. And there's even a store link below where you can buy some fun guitar shirts and other stuff that's on there too, but check it out. Okay, so my best friend's girl, so another great epic tune off of the Cars' first album in 1978. Um, this one's written by Rick Okasik. We're going to talk about the rhythm guitar parts that Rick plays and break down all of the parts that Elliot, Elliot Easton, the lead guitar player, plays. Um, and another just fantastic piece of guitar arrangement throughout this song. Okay, so if you've played along with this before, you sort of know this song as being in F. But the interesting thing is the Cars did not record this song in F. They played the whole thing in the key of E. And live, they only played it in E. And, um, uh, but it was, decision was made at some point during the process by somebody um, to speed that up a little bit um, so that it's slightly higher and it's, about, it's in the key of F. That's explained by Elliot Easton himself in this video that you're going to see linked here. Um, and he also goes through uh, some of the guitar parts that I'll cover here too. So you can see him talking through his parts as well. But I thought that was interesting. Okay, so Rick Okasek's part. Um, he, uh, and I'm going to play this in E, by the way. So, um, you know, if you want to play it in F, you can capo on the first fret if you want and just move everything up a fret with what I'm doing or just play it in E. It'll be fine. Just play it in E. It'll be fine. So the genius of a lot of these Cars tunes, in my opinion, is that you don't have two big guitars that are sort of fighting each other the whole time. And this is a really good example of that. Rick Okasek's part is very simple. He's playing a root and a fifth. He's playing like, you know, a power chord kind of thing. And he's playing it muted. Um, so you're muting that with the heel of your, your right hand. And you're only catching the root note and the fifth of each chord. And there's really only three chords in this song. It's E, A, and B, right? So the fingering that he has for his E chord is this. Just those two. The A chord is this. And the B chord is this. So it's a little bit different on the B. You're not doing, you're not doing that. You're doing, you know, if you're familiar with playing the B seventh. Right? It's just that. You're playing the major third. So it's root fifth, root fifth, root major third. So that's the only difference between the two. Um, but that riff that opens the song. And every once in a while you sort of catch the D string in whatever chords that you're doing. So I would finger it across the, the sixth, fifth, and fourth, or you know, the first three strings, whatever it is. And you sort of catch that real quick when you're coming back. Um, but that's basically what's happening. And he just continues that through the verses. He's just doing that the whole time. When it goes to the chorus, My Best Friend's Girl, it's alternating between A and B, but it's the same fingering. Feel free to embellish a little bit, but he's playing it very, very straight. very, very straight because all of the other stuff that's happening around is providing a lot of the color. And if he did anything other than that, it would sort of step on everything. Um, 
So great piece of guitar arrangement there. Um, so for Rick, I think that's it. That's really it. It's the verses. And then the chorus. That's really it for all his parts. So that uh, concludes Rick Okasik's part. Let's start talking about Elliot Easton's parts now. So Elliot had a number of sort of layers that he did on this song. Um, so I'm gonna go through all of them. The first one is the, I guess the heavy guitar. Um, and so overdrive, there isn't echo on it um, or, or delay. It's just very, that it's that kind of tone, right? So I have my blues driver set all the way max sort of on the gain. Um, I don't really have any overdrive coming out of the amp themselves because they're sort of low, but um, I'm maxing out my blues driver and sort of, sort of dial back the level so it's, um, you know, not blowing everything up, but, but that's the sound that I'm getting. Okay, so the part itself, um, it's gonna, it's coming in over the verses, which the verse again is the E, A, and the B. So he comes in with a big all the way down. So So that's really what's going on there, right? One more time slowly. So he's matching what Rick is doing there with that B note, really. So that runs through four times. <clears throat> and then during My Best Friend's Girl, the chorus, right? That's A to B. What he does on the A is he plays that chord very strong and then he pulls back and just does the um just does the root fifth because if he did anything other than that he would be stepping on the vocal really so like that or you want to play it down in first position That's all that's happening there. And then when it goes down into the turnaround, um, it's the same thing that's happening behind the little rockabilly part. So that's his supporting role with the sort of overdrive guitar that's happening. And there's that just repeats during those sections. So that's that part. Okay, and the rest of Elliot's parts are all clean. It's very sort of rockabilly tone um, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what guitar he played I've, on, on the record. So uh, I'm going to play my telly on my middle position. Um, and um, so for a sound, you know, I've got it clean. Got a little bit of reverb, but I definitely have that sort of slapback echo going on. And um, so the first part is that that comes in where he, you're hearing that guitar is the turnaround. So it's after the chorus. And it's this. It's that, that whole thing, right? The interesting thing about that too is, uh, for those of you who are Beatles fans, you'll recognize that um, that's instantly, that's the song I Will. Um, directly taken <laughs> almost almost verbatim that little riff there and i think he talks about it in that link i have um which again i think that song also in the beatles catalog they recorded that in e and sped it up to f i think that's true um but so the thing about elias playing when he's playing his leads is he really follows the chords and so all of the little parts within his solos when you break them down, his hand positions and everything, it's 
whenever there's a chord change, he really moves to exactly, you know, a version of what's happening um, for that chord. And um, it's very explicit the way that goes down. So the, the riff is... So the only difference that happens when he does that riff is that the main rhythm chords are just doing E, A, and B. But he's playing a rel the relative minor, which is the C sharp. I guess C sharp minor dominant seven or something. It's 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 that chord, right? So that's basically if you were to strictly do like full-on chord voicings of what he's doing on the lead, that's what would be informing those, right? But his lead is starting from the open position E, goes like this. Right? So he ends on that, which is the major third of the B. Right? So signals to you that that's clearly B there, right? So E. Relative minor, but it's still pretty much exactly an E chord. To your A. Now the chords are a B here, but you can still keep that. You play that E major sort of riff there over the B in that case, um, and it still works. And then the second time around. B. You're hitting that E flat note again to signal the B. So that's what I would call just sort of the standard variation of that turnaround riff. Um, now there's one, there's an alternate version of that riff that he does right before the guitar solo. And um, if you listen to it, the tone is different. It's really different on the, on the strings. And so I, he's gotta be playing it in a different place, right? Because it doesn't sound that jangly. It doesn't sound the same. Um, and watching a live video that I'll link here, when you get to that part of the song, you can see his hands are up here, right? That's the clue. So he's playing that riff somehow, not the other time, but just this time, um, right here. So the way that would have to go to be in this position, it would go something like this. and ends it there. So he's up here in that position. Um, there's a couple, you could, you could use your open E string in there. So instead of doing, you could have your, but I sort of don't hear that E ringing out. So I, I have the feeling that he's fingering it like this. Maybe even playing with his finger there, I don't know. Okay, so that's a variation. It's the exact same notes if you played it down here. And you can, and it's probably easier to do that, but this was new to me, so I wanted to show that. There's also a rhythm part that he plays with this clean rockabilly tone too, which is really, really fun. I think it comes in on the second verse, um, but he's playing behind, uh, you know, Rick singing over the second verse, and it's going. embellish it how you like, but the chords are this, this E6. And you can kind of mute with your heel and you drag your pick over it. And you sort of pick your hand up just a little bit to, to get the note. And then you have your A6 and B6. And you can slide them up and down. Love that. Very cool.
Okay, so what's left now is the solo. And what a very cool solo this is, right? Um, so he's, again, in his clean tone, got his rockabilly tone, rockabilly echo going on, um, and he's following the chords, okay? So now the chords during the chorus um, is what he's gonna construct the solo against. So it's just moving from A to B, to A to B repeatedly, okay? So each one of these parts is just cleanly over each one of those chords formations. So first one is A, right? He comes down here. So that's all over an A chord, right? That's the part of an A chord. That's a part of an A chord, right? Right, now it's gonna go to a B. Your B is up here. He does a little, uh, so he's gonna grab that part of a B chord, right? And he's just playing the third string and the first string up at 11, and he's bending it up and back down real quick. He's just bending it almost the equivalent of, it's sort of, one one-ish fret like that back and then he's going to end with this little cool pedal steel-ish um, lick where it goes like this right so all together so how you grab that is think of your uh think of your a chord like this you just want to grab your grab those on the a but you're adding your pinky on seven to get the B note and you're gonna take this string your third string and you're gonna bend it up to here while holding your other fingers in place to get that because you're you're bending it up so you get this right because it's sort of a B7 is what you're making out of that so all of that's over a B chord, right? So that so everything over the B chord went like this. Right? So now we're going to go back to an A chord. Um, we're going to be playing over this type of an A chord. You want to think about it for the next part of the lead. We're going to grab it at 10, bend it up to 12. Right? And do one of those. So that all that's over an A. Back to a B. We're gonna go back to our B, right? And here's where it gets a little fun. We're gonna play a B7 um, off of that B7. So we're gonna grab, if you think about that B7, we're gonna grab these last two notes off the B7. Figure them this way though. So you're taking, you're gonna bend that B string up like that, right? But you're gonna do it with your uh, fingering like this. Is the next part. And you're gonna do it twice. And it's a little chicken picking thing. And so you're sort of uh, gonna mute some strings when you pick them after that. So it's gonna go. Right? Now, if you want to fret the note, I mean, if musically, I, it's really hard to hear if he actually is fretting a muted note after that. Um, but if he is, I suspect it would be this. I'm going to play the notes now, so this will sound a little weird, but. Right? Because we're over a B chord here. Whoops. Then we move to this sort of a B chord here, which you're familiar with that bend, I'm sure. That's why I think it's hard to tell if he actually picks those notes. It sounds more like he picks them on the second one 
and maybe not on the first one, but. But that's what's happening. It's a bend up from this position. Chicken pick. Get your hand back into your place for the next bend. And you can end on those two notes. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to do a couple variations of like what we did before when we were on our B, when we did our bend up, right? We're going to walk up this time. Which I love that, right? All right, and then we're going to do a slide up. Which is another sort of expressive way to do the same thing. So the first one, or you're pulling it all the way up here, and you finish it off with your little pull off at the end. Right? fast like that. So all together, let's stitch this whole thing together. I'm going to play it slower than normal, but I'll play all the parts. And then, of course, coming out of that solo, you can hear the normal turnaround that he is. Then they overdub another one. I think he ends that one on that note. Like that six that we were doing up here on the B. It's the same thing here. Very cool. Okay, well that's the great guitar work of Elliot Easton and Rick Okasik on the Cars hit My Best Friend's Girl. Did you learn something new today? I hope you did. If you haven't done so already, please jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. It lets you know every time I do new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you think about this song. And if there's another one you want me to do similar lesson on, let me know that too, okay? Until next week, take care everybody.